Hey everybody, it's Kija here. I hope you guys are having a great day. I just came back from spring break, so I'm pretty pumped to play Paragon. So in this game, I started a health potion and a mana potion, which gives me sustain and then a harvester's key for my team. Typically, I would level up E and try and trap my lane, but this time they said they, they were thinking of invading the enemy jungle, so I did not, and I got Q, but I believe that we are actually just getting red buff. They're going right. All right. I'm surprised they aren't getting left, to be honest. Yeah, that would make more sense for the duo lane. So I'm going to quickly kill this. Actually, I'm just going to run to mid lane because we have five people there, so it's not really worth EXP splitting at all. And now I'm in the mid lane. So currently my job as a Murdoch is just to farm as much as possible and not die against enemy ganks. Murdoch is not the strongest character early game, although he's... Not not weak. Definitely not weak early game either. He's just a medium early game character. Um, perhaps if I see a kill opportunity, I will take it. But most likely, I am just going to kill and farm. See two people coming through. The perhaps are running right lane. This is quite nice for me as long as I oh get rooted. Oh, probably shouldn't have ran up right there. Although we can do some damage. I believe we have a little bit stronger level 1 than these guys. They do have Grux, but we have Murdoch and Steel. Hopefully I can kill... Oh, messed up. Got him, though. Yeah, so that root helped out a little. I can keep harassing them. I, I do have strong harass them right now because I'm level 2. Although I don't want to harass them. My team's going to just abandon me. I could have been bad if I didn't realize my team was abandoning me. That was a for sure death. But I'm totally okay in this 1v2 lane right now. They are not getting as much experience as me. I'm not too fearful of death. I'm going to probably trap this lane right here because the lane is pushing up quite a bit. All right. So, as you can see, what I'm doing right here, I'm just trapping the lane, creating like a path where they cannot go by. So I'm just going to try and trap that entire wall. So if they ever go by it, they're going to be slowed and take damage. Uh, this really helps. You can trap this too and this too if, if you're worried about uh, getting ganked from junglers constantly. This is really bad. Yeah, uh, there are steals pretty low. Perhaps I could have done something if I was up there with him, but I really don't think I could have just because Tumblast does have that mobility early game with his dash. And I did not have the damage to uh, kill him before he could retreat to tower. But luckily, our steel got out alive, so we didn't lose anything from that. And now, get, now uh, Tomblast is quite scared. So I'm going to keep making sure they can't pass this part right here. Perhaps I should be a little bit more aggressive with the red buff. Um, but and, and the level advantage, not just the red buff. In fact, I think I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive. But I was really just wanting him to try and aggress against me, which is what he did right there, which is why I died. Um, because I knew that I, did, I didn't want to keep putting myself in a position where I could get ganked by the enemy jungler and then be in a horrible position because I was aggressing against the Twimblast. I only wanted to take a fight if I knew I could definitely kill the Twimblast. Then it would be worth the risk. But just harassing wouldn't have been enough. Since I don't have traps on my left or right side, it, I'm pretty entirely open to ganks. This does not really help you against ganks at all. This just helps when the Twimblast pushes up. Or when you're a lane opponent, it pushes up. It doesn't have to be a tomb blast. No, I am not doing the best at CSing right now, but hopefully this changes. All right, we can see that Grax is coming in to gank me with tomb blast, so I'm gonna probably back. No reason for me to stay. All right. So for my first item, I'm going to start a Madstone gem. This just gives me quick uh, boost of attack speed and damage in the beginning that's super helpful once I get the max bonus on it I will put in another kinetic that way I can never really have to worry about attack speed until my last item I'm gonna head down here see if I can help my team down here 
as a Murdoch, you do want to roam. I, I think as any character in this game at the moment, you want to roam as much as possible if you if there's a chance for some nice kills. Just because currently with the great the, with the way the game works, like getting kills is so much better than getting farm. Like it's ridiculous. Like it, it's not even close. Getting kills, you get so much because all of that CXP right there is that dropped. It sh it shared with everyone that was around with the kill. It was it wasn't just me. So now my entire team, if you add up all the individual CXP, got a shit done. We can kill them here. Cool. So right there I saw they were lined up in a pretty narrow passageway, so I knew that neither of them could dodge my ult. So that's what you want to look for. You want to look for people that start something that creates them to be immobile, such as Grox's Q, or a stun from your team. So if Steel ulted there, that would have been an amazing ult by my spot, because it would have definitely not missed. Or also just narrow passageways where you don't really have too much room to escape and you can get nice sick collats to put in your uh, Murdoch montage. <laughs> Try and push this lane up to the best of my ability. I remember Gadget uh, in the older alpha test. It used to be so annoying because the, the bot on you would do... Like, that bot would have done, like, half my HP bar. It was it was quite ridiculous how overpowered that gadget was. So I'm going to try and stand behind this thing. Keep up my little wall. I'm getting ganked. Yeah, I am. There he is. Oh, I'm probably dead. I'm so dead. Oh, nope. He missed his Q. So, I think I can live here. Hey, I lived. Yeah, luckily he missed his Q, so I was able to make it out relatively unharmed. I'm going to check the blue harvester. No steel. I was backing anyways. Looks like steel already got the blue harvester. And with this, I can complete my build, or complete my Madstone gym. And once you complete your Madstone gym as Murdoch, you really start feeling the power of his scaling. Pretty much every item after that item is just like you get so much more powerful. Like, every single back from now on, I'll probably get a 50 damage to 100 damage increase on me while also getting crit on top of that. Perhaps I can use my ult to help them in the right lane right now. I'm a little bit too far to catch up with them, but the good thing about Murdoch mid lane is that you pretty much have global ult uh, power, so you're everywhere if they need you. If they need just a little boost of damage. Looking around. Can't see much. Much the old. Oop. You can always just cancel your ult with control. If you don't want to ult it. But yeah, it doesn't doesn't look. I missed a couple CS by looking around, and doesn't look like there's going to be any fights breaking out anytime soon. So I think I'm just going to keep farming, keep pushing the lane, try and make I'm trying to make a life a little bit harder for the enemy team by making them worry about mid lane. I'm going to try and put traps all around because this is a uh, part in the game where it's pretty much gank city now. It, the laning phase is just about over. It's not over yet, so people are still ganking a lot. Um, but it's close, very close to being over. So just put down as many traps as possible. Yep. And that's why you put down traps. I think I can kill him. Yeah, I definitely can. Grux is always scary because his damage is always ridiculous with that ult. Although that did save his turret, so... Nice job, Grux. I, I missed a lot, so I didn't kill him too quickly. And now Twinblast is here to defend. Luckily, Twinblast doesn't have the best wave clear. So I'm pretty sure I can still take this. He's trying to jump to block my auto attacks. But he's not jumping in the right spot. You gotta jump in the middle. With that... Oh! That was stupid of me. Walked right up to a Twin Blast with who had his ult. But I was able to get out. Assuming I lived these minions. Oh, I'm dead. So yeah, that was a little greedy of me. I didn't play that right against the Twin Blast. Took a lot of unnecessary damage. I, instead of standing either really close or really far from the Twin Blast, far being you can just move out of the ultimate if he uses it, close being you can just right click and push him away if he uses his ultimate. Uh, I stood in some weird 
middle ground, and you definitely don't want to do that against a Twin Blast because you are essentially dead once he uses his ultimate. Luckily, he was pretty far behind, so he didn't come in with his ultimate. However, he did do enough damage for his team to quickly clean up. So, that's the reason I died there. And definitely all this mid lane pressure and surviving the mid lane ganks has been able to help my team a lot. Although I haven't been really getting too many good cross lane ultimates. That's one of the best things about mid lane or solo lane Murdoch. Or really any lane Murdoch. Is that you have constant presence, presence everywhere. You can pretty much do 300 to 400 damage anywhere once you have your ult. Once you're level 5 in the mid lane. What is this guy doing? He's just roaming. Running around. Oop. Oh. Oh. I barely just, you just barely got out of range. Sparrow couldn't root him either. But perhaps we can take the red. Although it's down. Gonna come around from the back, see if I can deny this minion wave underneath the turret. Oop, I am not doing, I'm not landing enough autos. Get a nice ult. There we go. Sweet. So I definitely missed a lot of autos there unnecessarily. Um, those weren't hard autos to hit, but luckily I did enough damage with that multi-person ult to pretty much clean up that team fight. So yeah, always look in team fights for the multi-person stack up. It's not worth it to use your ult if you're not going to hit two or three people. Uh, late game, it's not worth it unless you're going to definitely hit three. But like it, with this part of the game, my auto attack doesn't do too much. Eventually, later on in the game, your ult pretty much just becomes an out of team fight accessory, just because your auto attack will do more damage than your ult. At least your crit auto attacks. But if you're building right, you should crit most of the time. Perhaps I can do some harass up to that guy. Doesn't look like it. I'm in quite a quite a risky position here, being this far pushed up. But I do have Muriel with me. So, I think I'm okay. Come on, Miro. Yeah. He's gonna snipe me. Interesting. Oh, I might die here. Nope. Yeah, I definitely played super aggressive here, but that was largely just because I saw my Miro incoming. Oh, missed that. And basically, a, a Miro and a, like a retreating retreating carry where like the enemy team can't really stun and catch up is pretty much game over for the enemy team because it's really hard to kill them if they keep chasing. Especially at this point in the game where they don't have too much like hardcore just burst damage. Like no one on their team has that much damage because they're all less than 20 card points. And even even if that was our team chasing because we're still we're still not uh, even at the mid game criteria uh, we are not able to do much damage against the Muriel carry retreating combo. If we get this inhibitor, it's pretty much game, just because how uh, an early inhibitor like this will net super minions that the enemy team can't handle. And because of our advantage, we are able to just push on that inhibitor. It's really uh, Muriel Steel and I are playing it pretty well, just like consistently but cautiously pushing this lane. A lot of people split push really uh, brashly, where they just keep pushing the lane, die, keep pushing the lane. But this this uh, mechanical pushing, making sure none of us die, we're always stay until all of us uh, are are ready to leave, that kind of stuff. It's um really hard for the enemy team to fight against that when they're behind. Especially with other people on the map doing pressure. Like we can see right lane is being taken down by Gideon and mid lane is being taken down by Sparrow. And there's not really much the enemy team can do. I'll get another micro nuke. Alright. So yeah, we're carrying pretty well. This is a pretty ideal game, I think. Just because my team wasn't terrible. And my team was pretty good, actually. My Muriel played that really well and saved my life. So, I quite enjoy my team right now. And with three inhibitors down, we just need to do an organized push and we can win the game. I'm going to take my red buff, and I'm thinking about taking my black buff, but that might just be a waste of time. 
simply because I don't think I need the siege damage. Oh, they surrendered. Cool. And that's how you carry as Murdoch with a pretty good team, I must say. So if, if you have a decent team, this is definitely super helpful. Uh, would have been interesting to see if I didn't have such a decent team, how that would have happened. But it was definitely uh, large, largely my part of the carrying. As you see, I, could, I have the most kills. Don't assists are pretty high up too. I wasn't really too well in the creep score department, but I was against the Gideon and Sparrow, who really strongly creep scored the entire game. So, yeah. Plus, our, our team comp was just much better than their team comp. But still, a lot of the tactics work well anywhere. You want to constantly look out for ganks, constantly trap your lane, constantly harass if you can, but CS is way more important than harass for Murdoch, because Murdoch just really doesn't have that strong of an early game, but he, s he picks up, he like his stat values are so great, they pick up so fast, that it's... It's so good to CS. Like, he may be weak early game. Like, a, a Murdoch at, at, at 20 minutes with 20 card points, so that's terrible, can still carry the game if you let him. You just gotta, like, make sure you keep CSing. Because the more card points, it, it's exponential growth with Murdoch in terms of his power and his card points. Once he gets the ball rolling, he really gets his rolling. Um, as, you, as you saw earlier, like, early game, even with red buff, I wasn't doing too much damage. But once once I got my Madstone Gem, pretty much my fully socketed Madstone Gem, pretty much everything in front of me died. Especially with well-placed ultimates. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I hope you learned how to carry with Murdoch. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to see more games like this, check me out at twitch.tv slash the link will be in the description. Thanks guys. See ya.